Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about the retiming menu in Final Cut Pro. If you don't know what retiming means, it's just the process of speeding things up or slowing them down. But there's a lot more to retiming in Final Cut than just going faster or slower. There's a lot of options in this menu and I'm gonna go over all of them with you. Let's just dive right into it. Here's the clip we're gonna be working with today. I got this off Artlist. I will link to it down below, but it's basically this mountain biker going over this jump in real time. The frame rate on this clip is 29.97 frames per second. Let's start with the basics. The retiming menu can be found in the bottom left corner of the viewer, or you can find it up here in the menu under modify and then navigate down to retime and you have all the same options there. The first option is to slow your clip. Now you can slow it by 50%, 25% or 10% increments. Now 50% means that your clip is going to double in length in your timeline. 25% means it's going to quadruple in length and so forth. So if we slow this guy down to 50%, you can see what happens in my timeline. I get what's called the retime editor. This is this orange bar at the top of my clip. When this bar is orange, I know that that clip is in slow speed. Let's play it back at 50% and have a look. All right, selected on that clip, let's open that retime menu again. And the next option down is fast. Now, while the slow options were in percentages, the fast options are in multipliers. So we can speed this clip up double time, quadruple time, octuple time, and 20 time. I don't know what the right word is for that. Let's do four times. And when my clip is sped up, I get a blue header as my retime editor and you can see that my clip is now much shorter in duration. All right, back in the retime menu, if we wanted to reset the speed on this clip, you can see that I can do that here in this menu, or I could just use the shortcut Shift N, and the color for a normal clip in the retime editor is green. The next option down is hold, the shortcut for which is Shift H. That's a really handy shortcut to remember, and what the hold function does is that it creates freeze frames in your clip wherever you have your playhead queued up. The hold frames are indicated by an orange bar at the top of the clip. Now by default, it's giving me a two second range of hold frames, but if I wanted to reduce or expand the number of hold frames, what I would do is grab this little black handle here and I can reduce the number of hold frames or expand the number of hold frames. I really prefer hold frames to freeze frames because hold frames stay within our clip, whereas freeze frames create an entirely new clip. So if I wanted to drop, let's say an effect onto this clip, I only have to do it once and it affects the hold frames as well. All right, to remove those hold frames, I'm just going to use the shortcut Shift N to bring everything back to normal. Now let's go to our next option, which is the blade speed, the shortcut for which is Shift and B. What the blade speed does is it allows you to impact the speed of different parts of your clip. So how it works is you'd place your playhead wherever you want to change the speed and you would hit Shift and B to make a split in your retime editor. Do you see that here? I haven't yet changed the speed of any part of my clip. Everything's still normal, but I've made that little cut there without having to make a through edit. I'm gonna make another cut right here by hitting Shift B once again. And now I can take this little handle and expand my clip. So our biker is gonna go over the jump in slow motion and return back to regular speed. One other tip about using the blade speed function is let's say you had bladed the speed in a few places on your clip and you wanted to restore them back to normal. What you can do is jump to the range tool, select that section of the clip, and then hit the shift N shortcut to return the whole thing back to normal. That's how you can get rid of some of those blade cuts if you didn't want them there anymore. The next item on our list is custom speed, the shortcut for which is Control, Option, and R. What this does is it brings up this pop-up menu in the Retime Editor. In this menu here, we can change the direction from forward to reverse. We can actually customize the speed based on percentages that are not options in the default slow or fast menus in the Retime Editor. So for instance, I could speed this up to 150, or I could slow it down to 39%. 
We can also set the speed by duration. So if I knew I needed this clip to be exactly five seconds long, I could just select duration and type in a value of five seconds and it automatically calculates the speed that this clip needs to be. In this case, it's 123%. To close the custom speed pop-up window, we could just click anywhere outside of that clip and then to access it again really easily, there's a little hidden menu here at the top of the Retime Editor that gives us our options for slow, fast, normal, and to bring that custom speed pop-up back up. Before I jump to the next item in the retime menu, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Let's move on to our next item, which is reverse clip. Now we could reverse the clip in the custom speed menu, but you can also just do it right here in the retime menu. And this one's really self-explanatory. It plays the clip in reverse motion. The next one down is to reset the speed. This will bring your clip back to forward motion. The other thing the reset speed option does is let's say you had retimed a clip, you could use this to go back to the normal speed as well instead of hitting shift N. I think the shortcut for shift N is way easier to remember than the reset speed shortcut. So I like never use that. All right, the next option down is automatic speed. This one's a little bit complicated. So I'm going to show you an example here. This clip that we've been working on, like I said, is 29.97 frames per second. I'm going to open a new project that is a 60 frame per second project, and I'm going to drop that same clip onto it. And now when I play it back, it looks totally normal. It doesn't really look any different from the 29.97 timeline that we were working on before. Final Cut corrects for differences between your project frame rate and your clip frame rate. So generally speaking, when you drop a clip into your timeline, it should look normal regardless of what the clip's frame rate is. However, if we switch this to automatic speed, it automatically does the math and makes this clip double time to what this clip should look like theoretically on a 60 frame per second timeline. This also works in the other direction as well. I'm going to go back to 29.97 frames per second project here. And I'm going to drop this clip on. It hasn't been color corrected, so forgive me. This clip, as you can see, is 59.94 frames per second. And it's playing back in normal speed. I know it doesn't look like they're going that fast. That's because the cameraman was directing them, but they're in normal speed. If I set this to automatic speed, now it's in slow motion. So a lot of times when we're shooting a subject that's like kind of hard to wrangle, like kids, we'll shoot them in 60 frames per second and then bring it to our 24 frames per second timeline and turn on automatic speed. That way our shots are in slow motion and they're just generally longer and easier to edit with. All right, we're back here in normal speed with our mountain biker. Let's jump to our next option, which is speed ramp. So what this is going to do is it's going to over time slow down our clip. So the clip gets slower and slower and slower all the way to a hold frame at the end. Do you see that little hold frame at the end? Let's zoom in. There it is, 0%. Obviously the other option on the speed ramping is to start from zero and go all the way up to 100%. So we're starting very slow and then gradually we're getting faster and faster and faster. Now speed ramping isn't something I reach for a lot, but I'm curious to know if you do. How do you use speed ramping? Let me know in the comments, I'm really curious. All right, let's go back to the next item in the menu, which is instant replay. Instant replay gives you four options. Let's pick 100% and I'll show you what that does. It replays the previous clip at normal speed when you choose 100% and it gives you this instant replay graphic at the top. I'm going to undo that and let's go back to instant replay and select 25% and basically does the exact same thing. It duplicates the previous clip, but this time it's going to play it back at quarter speed. The next option is the rewind option. Let's select the one time multiplier. And basically what this does is it's going to play the entire clip forward and then it's going to rewind it backward at a normal speed and then replay it again going forward. If we select the rewind option and select four times, that rewind portion is going to be much faster. One little tip I would give you for using the rewind option is that you can create a through edit. That's when you just use the shortcut command B to split a single clip into two pieces. So I'm going to do that right before this guy gets on the jump. And then I'm going to use the rewind function 
Let's do it at the two times multiplier. And what happens here is that now my clip won't rewind all the way back to the beginning. It'll just rewind to before the jump where the action happens. The next option down is jump cut at markers. So what I've done is just dropped some markers you can see here on my clip. I'm going to head over to the retiming menu and I'm going to select jump cut at markers and let's just select 20 frames. What this is going to do is cut 20 frames out of my clip at each marker. I love this feature, especially for longer clips, because you can lay a music track underneath, add markers to all of the beats, and then make the clip jump at each music beat. It's such a great effect. The next menu option here is one you really need to know about. It is video quality. So the first thing I'm going to do is slow this clip way down to 25% speed. And you can see what happens here. The clip looks really jittery. Back in the old days, I used to tell clients, I cannot slow a clip down. I can only speed it up because it's not gonna look great. However, now we can make this very slowed down clip look good. Let me show you how. Under the video quality option, we're set to normal, but there's a couple of other options here. I'm gonna start with this bottom one, optical flow, because I do think this is the better option. When you select optical flow, Final Cut will analyze your clip and make the playback so incredibly smooth. Sometimes though, you can get some distortion with optical flow and we can definitely see that as our mountain biker gets closer to the camera. So if that was a problem that you are encountering, you could try the other option instead of optical flow. Let's go to frame blending. And so we're still getting a little bit of a stuttery look. I personally like to reach for optical flow over frame blending. I find that I usually get a better result with optical flow. For the next option we're gonna talk about in the retime menu, I'm actually gonna go back to the blade speed function. So I'm gonna queue up my playhead back up to right before we launch off the jump. I'm going to hit shift B as my shortcut for blade speed, and we'll do it again right as he's in mid air. Now the option we're gonna be looking at is this one here, speed transitions. Last time I showed you the blade speed tool, I had speed transitions disabled, but generally you might want them on. So basically what the speed transitions enablement does is it allows you to grab these black handles in your retime editor. And you'll see now that you're getting these like gray boxes, these transitions between one speed and the next. What this does is that it makes the change in speed in your clip more gradual. So it's not such an abrupt change. Now there are times that I do want that abrupt change. Like let's say I'm retiming to the beat of music and I want it to feel more dramatic, but usually I just want it to feel a lot more subtle. And the last option in the retime menu is a pretty important one to know, and that is to hide the retime bar. Once you've made all of your speed changes, you probably don't wanna look at this thing anymore. So all you have to do is select your clip and hit Command R to hide the retime editor. If you wanna see it again, it's the same shortcut, Command R. So that's everything you need to know about the retiming menu in Final Cut Pro. Which one do you reach for the most? Which one didn't you even know about that you learned about today? Let me know down in the comments, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I got some other videos for you and I'll see you again.